Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome back to Shenanigans. We are back from holiday break. We are all caught up at home, but we have a lot to catch up on with you. Brock is back in the studio, and um, we have so many things to talk about, honey. I'm in the hot seat. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. It's the new year. I really enjoyed our new year. Um I feel like hopefully everyone understands like it's a fresh start. Let's get it going. Yeah. So last night was the Creative Arts Emmys. For those of you watching, you can see I still have a little bit of last night's hair, last night's eye makeup. One thing I do whenever I get my makeup done professionally, I wash my face all the way around my eyes and I try to keep the eye makeup for at least the next day, cause especially Marine on Ice, when they do my eyes, it's just so good. Well, so, that little makes, bit of last night's makeup. That makes in sense. There. This morning I woke up and I was like, You do realize you missed some because you had like a little bit There's of panda, a little, or, bit a little bit under, of smudge. But... Okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, let's just talk a little bit about last night first because I feel like I don't know if it's a little bit of the caffeine I've had today. I'm a little on a high, I'm a little just like, Oh my gosh. I mean, I could have never imagined in 2011 when I sat down with Alex Baskin and talked about doing this pilot about the restaurant I worked at that fast forward, like I'm going to get emotional to 2024. We're at the freaking Emmys. Mm. It was just like, pun intended, so surreal. Just looking around and even though we didn't win can we say that i mean it's public right yeah we didn't win but that's okay congrats to welcome to rexham for winning every everything <laughs> everything category. but um just being there presenting the awards that's always been a dream of mine to do as well and i was telling lala i used to be the girl who would hold the trophy on the side and so to just have this full circle moment for me but to give all of these other people, their awards, and just to see the emotion and all of the hard work, it was so incredible. I could have just never imagined. It's one of those things you dream of, you hope it happens one day, but like, holy shit, we did it. We got nominated. We're on an Emmy nominated television show, which is just, it's wild to me. And uh, to get a present, wow. It was uh, it was something to see, like to see you up there on stage, and then with just literally the seventy fifth award show for the I Emmys. Know. It was pretty impressive, and so I mean, I was I've been impressed from day one since I've met you, honey, and and like thanks, honey. What you get up to with your work, and I think for me, I remember BravoCon was the first year where I realized twenty nineteen twenty nineteen <laughs> when I walked around that corner, I was like, oh, you were in a show, mm. and like yeah, the the reach of the show, and kind of like. And from then, I was always just impressed of how you've been able to manage your way through all of that and to, to deal with everything that comes with being on that show, but then to be acknowledged, I think, for you and for your castmates, I thought that was a really cool moment, you know? Such hey, guys, honor. well done. Not, yeah. many sh not many shows make it past 10 years. Yeah, I you know. You know what I mean? And then you guys are now nominated on your 10th season. Yeah. So... So crazy, but I mean, congratulations to everybody, Thank right? You. The whole yeah, team, for sure. Everyone, there's so many people who put so much hard work into this show. It's not just the cast. There's like 80 people behind the scenes putting their lives into this show as well, and taking the time. I met so many of our editors last night, and they were nominated as well. And I have been saying this from day one: our editors deserve an Emmy. They were robbed. I uh. think that they do so much amazing work, and it was like. I'm sorry that you have to look at my face and listen to my voice over and over and over to figure out the best parts. Because how do you do that? How do you take hours of a conversation and turn it into minutes? They absolutely crush it. And it was just such, such an honor to be a part of this last night. I got a fun like off the top one. Okay, so when the, the awards were happening, when you up to get your award, you have your, your speech. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> I want you to give me your best speech because the best part about the speech 
was the cutoff time. <laughs> oh my God. It was like 10 seconds, I felt like. They were already playing the music. I'm like, yo, this is not a live show. Let the people think who they want to think. They were they were hard, but uh, it was interesting. Yeah, so you guys can watch this on Saturday the 13th at 8 p.m. on FXX. And the thing is, even if we did win, we as the cast weren't speaking. Alex Baskin would have done the acceptance speech. Because right when we sat down, I looked at Lala and I go, wait, oh my gosh, what if we win? Who? Do-? Okay, obviously we thank our moms. We thank like the people, the fans, the people who work on the show, the Academy. The- I was like, but she's like, no, we're Alex Baskin is saying it. And I guess that was in our notes. So yeah, if you in the email. I was like, oh, okay. So we just got to, you know, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. And... Uh, it, yeah, it was just incredible. Congratulations to, to all those winners. Yes, seriously. So much hard work goes into making television shows. And yeah, the Emmys, the after party, so cool. The um, amount of people we met and just, you know, making connections with other people in the industry and finding out who's a fan of Vanderpump Rules, who watches the show. And then to also, like I said, meet the people who work on our show behind the scenes and in the editing deck is just... It was a real wow moment. I'm not going to wow. lie. I FaceTimed my sister. I was like, Nicole, you're uh, not going to believe this. From a farm <laughs> she, to the Emmys. And she was literally working. In, she was on site, in the mines. She's just like in her office. I was like, look at this. She was yeah. like, no way. Uh, yeah, it's very surreal. Very blessed. Well done, wow. honey. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Well, you guys sent in so many questions. I want to try and get to as many of these as we can. But... I feel like we should start with the holidays, Australia, we had Christmas, New Year's, I mean... BTV. Yes, and we had a lot of people ask, what was our highlight other than Beyond the Valley? Because that obviously was one of the main reasons we went to Australia. We had a job, we did a live shenanigans show in Melbourne. I got to meet... A cousin of mine who I've never met. We've just been Instagram friends for as long as I can remember. And that was so fun to get to do the festival with him and his fiance to see some of your family. But I guess that would be my highlight other than the festival or was the next festival we went to Wildlands with your family. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Bringing your mom and your brother and your sister-in-law and everyone, your sister's stepkids. Too. Who aren't kids. I mean, they're in their twenties. It was but. it was awesome. We got to I got we got an Airbnb in Brisbane, and then we when we flew up, we got to see the family. We're obviously there for two nights. Yeah. First night, hung out. We played cards till the morning or early hours, and then the next day went to the Lawn Bowls Club, the local cl- bowls club. Yeah. Uh, with my extended family, and then that evening for New Year's Eve, got to we thanks to be on the valley. They hooked us up with artist passes. We had no idea where we were going in this festival. So we kind of just like walked around in circles. Yeah. Uh but yeah, it was uh it was a really cool moment to go home and spend that with my family. I haven't spent holidays with my family yeah. since twenty when I moved 14, over here, 2013, yeah. 2014. Yeah. Wow. Had you been to a festival in Australia prior? Like, is this something you did when you were younger? No, this was this, this was, was the a, first a brand new experience. Beyond the Valley in Melbourne, Melbourne was the first ever Australian festival because I only started no really way. partying. I only started partying when I turned twenty six. Once I got out of the league, right. and I was like, oh, okay, well now I got to enjoy life. Maybe <laughs> uh, thanks to the boys. And then, yeah, I started partying at the age of 26, a little late bloomer. See, I didn't even realize that that was our both of our first Australian festivals. And it's so crazy because it was so different. It was basically the same lineup for both festivals, the same company who put on both shows. But the one in Melbourne was such different vibes than the one in Brisbane. The one in Melbourne, these people have, which you'll see on my vlog coming up soon. All of these people have these things called Doof sticks. And it's like this really tall, like walking stick sort of thing with a massive cardboard paper with lights and tinsel and garland and all of this stuff around it. But each one was a different theme for your group. So you can find people in the crowd. We just use blinky rings on our finger when we go to Coachella. This put blinky rings to shame. They would never be allowed at any American festival <laughs> because it's a weapon <laughs> here a in Australia. It was much different. But how wild was it to look out in the crowd? We got to be 
backstage. It was with very Rufus tribal, Soul. if I can give you that. <laughs> so cool. It was very tribal because like you looked around and everyone had their own their dwarf sticks, their their community flag for partying. When we got to the festival in Brisbane at Wildlands, I was expecting the same thing, not one doof stick. I was like, is this a Melbourne thing? Is it just a beyond the valley thing? Because yeah, that look, one was a little more desert. I, I have no idea because, again, never been. They know the culture of partying. But I'll assume, like, maybe because it was a three-day event thing, like, it becomes part of, like, your guys. No, it was like a the, five, four or five day. I think it was four days, three nights, four days, okay. right? Uh, because on the first they just break down and leave. Oh, and Wildlands was only a one day. Yes, that's true. That so is the difference. I think that's it, if you just go in there for one day, people are coming to party right. and, and getting after it. Well, so. one was a little more country and camping, and then the other one was very city in a stadium, basically. Yeah. So they were totally different vibes, but it was really cool to be able to see the same bands in two completely different settings. Uh, Dom Dollar. Do we do we point this one out when oh, we're backstage? Oh my gosh, I was shook when I saw this. First of all, I didn't even realize it was him. I just saw a guy backstage with us in Australia wearing a Schwartz and Sandy's hat. And I'm like, where the fuck did you get that? I was like, babe, that guy over there, see that hat? The Schwartz and Sandy's hat. She's like, what do you mean? We go up to him, not knowing it was Dom Dollar. Walk up, hey bro, where'd you get your hat from? He's like, oh, my girlfriend, she's over there. He like gives me a hug and he's like, all right, I gotta go have a set now. And I was like, oh my God, that was Dom Dollar. (laughs) And he goes up and performs and then his girlfriend goes by. We're like, oh, we like the hat. And then she's like, oh my God, yeah. And then she noticed you. She was like, we liked it, we said we recognized it. Oh my God. And then uh, she was like, I'll be right back. And then we failed because we ran off and then she came back and they kept walking. So we missed that. But yeah, I think it was, I thought that was a pretty, f- the fact that Schwartz and, and, he, and it's just one of his main top three hats he's been partying with too. Yeah, that was crazy. I saw a lot of people ask why didn't we take summer to Australia, mainly because it was a very quick trip. The amount of time it took to get there and back, I felt like we were pretty much only there for that amount of time. The time change there, I don't think eventually when we do take her will be as hard because it's basically the same time of day, give or take a couple hours, but the next day, you know, I I feel like that'll be an easy adjustment. Once we get back, I think is the hard part. The trick with flying to Australia is your most flights leave at about 10 p.m. You leave in the evening. Mm -hmm. You're going to land in Australia in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so if you get on that plane, you take a nice big six and as long as you can sleep and get the big chunk of it out, then you're waking up, then you just got a very long day ahead of you. It's not like, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's the best way to deal with that. And then on the way back, yeah, that wrecked me. I got home and I slept. Yeah, I know. But it was a very quick trip. We planned to take her back for at least like a couple weeks and spend time with the family. So she just stayed with my parents. We didn't take her on this one, but we also had to go and work and festivals and it would have just been way too much it was a great relationship building that trip that's what it was we want to figure out how we can get back to australia more and honestly i think a lot of of the uh, fans they kind of feel like i dog on australia and i promise you i don't i just haven't been home for a while but i went home to melbourne and i just felt like i was at home i was like damn see honey like and i think she you even said to me you were like oh now i kind of understand you a little bit more because literally you got got it the laid back culture just the you know she'll be right just every i was like oh this is where you get it from i was raised very differently even when we went to the car rental at the airport it was like hardly any questions asked they didn't give a shit about insurance or anything they're just like all right well over there key that car go and we're like wait what dropped it off didn't ask for any id I mean, the security at the festivals was, for me, I felt a little concerning. So I'm like, that guy just, what, wait, there's actually no metal detectors. What is happening? It oh, was there's so. there's no guns, remember? I know there's no guns. There's still knives. There's still other weapons. Yeah. But it was just so lax that I'm like, oh, I see where you get it from. I love it. I love it. I missed it. It filled my cup. And so the goal is to get back to Australia a lot more, obviously, to spend time with the family. Yeah. Um, And, you know. Our lives are a little different now, so I want to make sure we can, like, live between the two. Totally. And speaking of family, I do have an obvious question that came in, but we're going to take a quick little break, and then we're going to get back to that. Okay, everyone, it's a new year. It is time to get started on all of those New Year's resolutions with Factor. New Year, new you. Factor still has the amazing ready-to-eat meal delivery that takes 
any stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success this new year. You can skip the grocery stores, all the prep work, cooking fatigue, all of the extra waste you build up in the trash. Instead, how about you get some chef crafted, dietitian approved meals that are delivered straight to your door? They have over 35 meals to choose from per week. They have so many different options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and over 55 weekly add ons. So you have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kick start the new year. We have been getting our wellness shots and little green juices that even when Summer sees that we have little green juice, she wants a little green juice. The smoothies in the morning on top of the meals for lunch and dinner literally keep me going. Brock and I sometimes fight over whose meal or whose, so we have to put them in different columns in the fridge. I'm like, the right side, do not touch. My roasted red pepper chicken I had the other day with this rice, oh my gosh, so good. Can't wait until I get my next one. Also, if you need a special occasion meal, Gourmet Plus is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast upscale options done very easily. In just two minutes in the microwave, boom, dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever you want is served. Head to factormeals.com slash goodasgold50 and use code goodasgold50 to get 50% off. That's code goodasgold50 at factormeals.com slash goodasgold50 to get 50% off. Okay, so obviously I have to ask because everyone on Instagram who's sent in questions has asked if we got a chance to see your kids while in Australia. And I just want to let you say whatever you want to say because that question is not for me. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. you want to address that. I'll jump in here. Uh, I think it's a very difficult situation based on my actions, my past, and where what uh, what my actions have caused for these kids, especially when they were younger. Um, there was obviously there's trauma there that needs to be mended. And then my actions on the, on my side, I need to show them, keep turning up and show them that I am the dad that I want to be and that they want to be around. Um, so that's first and foremost, is when it comes to child support, we paid them in full, made the payment. Uh, and now we're working on a healthier relationship or a better relationship with the kid's mom and their stepdad. And the goal is to just be on time with my child support every month, make sure that payment goes across and just continually turn up, ask, communicate with them. Right now, the parents and their choices, they would like to just keep it private. They obviously have a very private life. Mm -hmm. And so I I know everyone's interested in my two little ones and I love that. And they are top of mind every time I go back home. And the goal is to be able to have the door there. It's always open. So when they want to build that relationship with me when they see that I am where I have been turning up and continually turning up, hopefully they can build that trust up. So it's a, uh, it's tough. Um, my actions put me here. And so now I just got to keep being aware that I got to take my time with this and do the right thing and keep turning up. And yeah. so that's, that's where we're at. It's a tough one. I wish I could tell everybody like, yeah, we're going we're meeting up, we're doing this, but it's going to take time. We're dealing with kids. They're going from high school, uh, preschool to high school. There's a whole bunch of things changing in their life and I don't want to be another one in there. Um, I think they have a loving dad, half sister, uh, and a beautiful family. So, you know, right now that's not their priority and I understand that. Yeah, totally. But and- thank you, everybody that's concerned. I would love for them to come around eventually, but yeah, we're dealing with kids. Yeah, and rebuilding that relationship with your ex-wife and getting caught up and being consistent with the child support and being able to at least receive photos regularly now, you know? So it's like baby steps, but at the end of the day, these kids are old enough to make their own decisions and, you know, they have their solid family unit set in place and they're in a very good place. So I know you're not going to disrupt that. You're going to do what you can to keep, you know, showing up in whatever ways you can. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Not easy. Well, do you want to um, switch gears, as Andy Cohen says? Yeah, switch it up. <laughs> What's the best and worst things about being married to me? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think they're both the same, I think. I don't know. Uh, 
I think, honey, the best part about being married with you is the fact that you just make sure things get done. Uh, I think the worst part about being married to you was the fact that you want everything to be done in a particular <laughs> way. So it is the both of them. Um, anyway. Was there anything else you wanted to say about that? Was it something I said that got you emotional? I think it's just uh, just the whole, this is the bearing of it, like the whole situation in itself. And it's just like, there's a side of me that wants to just fight hard, but then there's a side that reminds me of like, you just, it's just, it's just a tough balancing act. And, uh, you know, actions have consequences. And so now I just gotta, just hearing you talk about it, I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm, uh, I'm happy with the changes I've made in my life and I'm really happy with all of that. So, <sighs> yeah, just need a second. Yeah. We're going to take one more break. <coughs> we'll be right back. And now that we've got you fed, let's keep you hydrated with liquid IV because look, you don't have to reinvent yourself for the new year, but you do have to rehydrate yourself. And you can do that with liquid IV. I'm telling you, this is something I have in all of my bags. I have it on the go. I have it in my cabinets. I have it all of the time because as much as I enjoy how I feel when I'm hydrated, I don't enjoy drinking just plain water. I like that extra kick of flavor that liquid IV gives me. It's convenient packaging. It is just these little tiny packets that I'm telling you could fit in any tiny clutch or if you want to put it in your pocket or bra. And let me tell you the best thing about liquid IV is that just one stick plus 16 ounces of water, it hydrates better than just water alone. Three times the electrolytes of any of the leading sports drinks. There's no artificial sweeteners, it's zero sugar, and they have eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy, I mean. What are you waiting for? Rehydrate yourself for the new year. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEY at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code HONEY at liquidiv.com. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're back. <sighs> Well, I do have more family relationships. No, I'm good on the, the question. That's, that's obviously that's just a loaded question. Of course, you know, there's, there's we couldn't sit here and that. do this podcast and not address that when we were just back home and everyone wants to know. And although there are things that you know, as much as we put ourselves on a television show to put ourselves out there, it's like you know, oh well, certain things should be kept private, but then. I didn't sign up for a private life and neither did you when you started dating me. And so I feel like there are things that we do owe the fans yeah. a little bit on, but obviously the relationship, she wants to keep their lives as private as possible. So we do have to respect that. But I just, I felt it would be weird to do a podcast with you starting off the year after we had just been back home by not acknowledging no, and, where we're and, at and that's that. it like i feel like you're you're right like i'm okay talking about it i think i just don't talk about it so when i talk about it i don't know how those emotions there just come up so yeah we're here yeah we're doing the best we can totally and um i hear better help has great therapists so <laughs> <I've been using laughs> <their money. laughs> i don't even know if that's an ad in this podcast but if not it'll be coming up soon so stay tuned <laughs> but um seriously just i think that you have put so much work in, in your life, in this relationship, in this family, and you have been going to therapy for the past like year now. And I think just continue with that and being the best version of yourself because you've definitely put the work in and I it. see it. Next question, where are we at? What do you guys do to keep the relationship going strong? Wait, time out. I said the reasons why I love about you and dislike about the being married to you. The question was for you. you. You're, I'm the host. Oh, You're okay. the guest. All right, next one. Hit me. Yeah, I just asked you. What do we do to keep our relationship going strong? Uh, just, uh, I feel like our date nights are really fun. Yeah. Um, case in point, we got to go to the Emmys last night. and We had a car <laughs> so service. Fun. Like, we're good. Um, 
there's that. And then I think we just spend a lot of, we're good at having downtime. Although I went out of our house the other day on a Saturday and I was like, damn, we live in Marina, but we don't really take advantage of like Abbott Kinney or get out and about. So I know I did more when I lived there the first time. Yeah. Right. So I think uh, what we do right now is we do really well at, you know, we enjoy each other's company. What I would like to do more of is more things outside of our company and mm -hmm. put ourselves in back into the world. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. How do you tell one another when they have upset you and how do you keep it calm? I mean, I'm very, I'm, I, as you can tell, I, I'm very, like, I just wear my emotions <laughs> on my sleeve. So yeah. when I, I can't keep put my, it out there. I can't keep my mouth shut. No. And that's, that is like, it's a bad habit. I should yeah. be. Yeah. Between you and my mother. Oh my gosh. Ah, look, it's all love. Like it's not, it's not coming from like a, like a, I don't want to hurt anybody when I say and voice my opinion, but I'm mm -hmm. entitled to it. But I should just shut up half the time. Yes, you should. <laughs> How do you compromise when your partner has a different parenting style? Great question. Because <sighs> we struggle with that. And we I do. know we have other friends who are similar with that. And it's tough i'm not gonna lie have i not been better yeah i'm was i finished talking no you're right continue it's tough not gonna lie it is something that requires a lot of compromise and meeting in the middle i understand when he wants to be really strict with the schedule the long-term benefits of that and brock is the first person to not suggest something without actually researching it the next question I saw was who was more of a yes parent from my TVTs. And that's definitely me. And that's where it is hard with the parenting differences because I just want to give her whatever she wants and I want to keep her calm and happy and say yes to everything. But I know that that's not what's best for her in the long run. So meeting in the middle, understanding where you're coming from, knowing that when you're suggesting something, it's because you have absolutely researched it where I tend to be the more emotional and I don't want to say loving because we're both loving, but I'm more like, come here, let me just give you a cuddle. And you are more stern with your parenting style. They call it cuddling. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a parenting technique that you got from your mom. Okay. And we've been down this road before. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Was it hard on the relationship filming VPR together this season? Yes. Well, I thought that was a, qu that was a question I for mean, me. Uh, for both of us, I guess. Well, yeah, this this season was, I think, as everyone's going to watch, like it's just very intensely difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, this season, I mean, um, again, this is my third season. First season was season nine. Season 10, well, I wasn't around as much. And then this season, season 11. Boom, back in it. Back in it. But we, I was really excited to that what we did film was just me and you. And mm -hmm. it was me and you and our, our story yeah. and, and like what cameras captured, I feel like can be very relatable because we argue about really real, real things. Like mm -hmm. obviously we're in a world of dealing with everything else, but we got to have that within yeah. all of that chaos. How to raise a kid, dealing with mother-in-law, parent-in-laws, go from there. So, yeah, it was totally. good. I mean, that, that, that was my opinion until we see this. <laughs> then we get to watch it. So they see how that comes across. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Last one on this topic. Any advice for new parents who are trying to balance work, family and marriage? Oh, uh, advice. I mean, fun fact, like I'm seeing it from the other side. Like there just takes there's a lot of time in, in kids. And I think. Just put the phones down. If, if you're around your kid and yeah. you, and the time you have with them is very limited, put your phone down. And even the other day, I was on the toilet and <laughs> Summer walks in and she grabs the phone off the counter because it wasn't in my hand. It was on the counter uh -huh. and she put it in my hand. Because she knows when you sit on the toilet, I'm on, my phone. on your phone. And so that for me was just like a wake up. I was like, God, like, because that's it. Uh -huh. Your kids are just a mirror. Like you can teach them whatever you want to say to them. They don't care. They, it's actions, whatever they see you do, whatever they yeah. see you do, whatever they see you around. And so, you know, me and Sheena's big one is keeping our phone off, mm -hmm. trying to. And so my daughter did that. Now I got to be better at this, guys. I yeah. want everyone to keep me accountable. No, totally. All right. I have uh, so many more topics and things to get into. So All we're right, going to take. I'll be quick with my responses too. Okay. We're going to take one more quick little break and then we're going to get into shenanigans yeah more shenanigans <laughs>
All right, so are you that one friend in the group that loves to treat yourself because it's okay, honestly, we all do it. I did it today. I got my nails done. I got a pedicure. I opted for the extra 10-minute foot massage, a little green tea-infused lotion because I was like, you know what? I deserve it. I was on my feet all night at the Emmys this week, and I deserve it. Sometimes maybe you want to opt for that extra leg room on the seat of the plane because you know what? Your vacation starts now. So if you treat yourself to top options with everything in life, why settle when it comes to finding a doctor? Because it is your health after all. And this is one thing I have to talk to my foreign husband about all the time is healthcare in America is different than it is in Australia and New Zealand. So enter ZocDoc. This is the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors all with verified patient reviews. So don't settle, go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. And trust me, when we were looking for a new dermatologist because we had to get our skin checked, boom, ZocDoc. Whether we are in LA, San Diego, Palm Springs, wherever you are, you put your zip code, you put your insurance information, and there are hundreds of options. I'm telling you, it's that easy. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. I'm telling you, you're looking for a new OB, a general doctor, a cardiologist, whatever it is, new eye doctor, they have it. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Sheena and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Sheena. ZocDoc.com slash Sheena. All right. Will there be a season 12 of Vanderpump Rules? <laughs> Is that a question to me? I'm like, let's get through season 11 first. Why are Kristen and Janet no longer friends? Kristen confirmed, but didn't elaborate. I'm oh, I know gonna, the answer to this. Am well, I going to answer all these questions? No, I have no, no, no. I was, was going to say, I think we saved that one for when Janet has postpartum recovered and is back in the hot seat. But I there no will idea. also be um, somewhere you can watch that answer soon. What did you think about Jack's lying about Brittany having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. If if that is what he, I'm not there, I'm the. I he said it on the finale of House of Villains. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get. I don't get it. That doesn't make sense. When Brittany was hospitalized, they thought, and I know she has cleared this up on her podcast as well. They were ruling out a lot of things. They didn't know what it was, and maybe they had said like, "Oh, we need to check and do an MRI to see if she had a stroke." Maybe that was something, but. The way I guess Jax described it, I didn't watch, but he said that he had to leave because she had a stroke. And then Brittany's like, are you fucking kidding me? Now she has to go and clear this up that that's not what it was. And Jax, I feel like, is just a special breed of his own. Like He is a very <sighs> special breed. And yes. I obviously have worked with him for 11 seasons, 11 I mean, it, years. No, been but there friends was with him for how long? Eight seasons and then two break. And then he's kind of been back and forth a little bit. But I spent... I spent Two days filming with him, and I was just like, <laughs> "What is that? What is going on?" Yeah, I had eight years of that, and I don't, I met Jax right when the show started, so I didn't have a friendship. Was he with the him same before, before the show started? Because I heard this was his. Like, yep. He's just bang. Always has been. Full steam ahead. Full steam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Will you be going to see Ariana in Chicago? I will be there opening night. I'm doing a mom daughter trip. Lala, her mom, some other friends, and moms. So we will be there opening night. And then you and I will definitely go back for a date night. Whenever we're out there for like Watch It Happens Live or something, yeah. I want to go see it as much as I can. As much as I'm in New York while she is doing her run, I can't I'm just going to put this out there again. I've said it to you a couple of times. I'm going to put it on the podcast. I'd less like to go to New York and take summer for like a week. Yeah. We go hit up our buddy out there and be like, oh, what up? Go out there for a week. Just saying. Yeah. No, just, just I, w- saying. I would love to do that. So, BravoCon. <gasps> do you remember when... Alexis Bellino, she was on stage with Gretchen and she just went rogue and was like, I'm the only woman up here who hasn't slept with Slade Smiley. Yes. And Andy Cohen came up and was like, yo, this is not part of the script. Like, you know. (laughs) So do you remember me telling you about the after party, how I said something to her? Yeah. 
because she recently posted on her Instagram story and said that that was hashtag lies and that it never happened and that all she did was smile at me and say hi or whatever. And I'm like... This was upstairs when she walked yep. in on that rooftop yep. bar on yep. the right-hand side of... When he straight walked straight in to the right-hand side of that bar right there. Yeah, rooftop... Oh, yeah. Open bar, I just want to point out because I think she might have spent a little too much time there, but it absolutely happened. I absolutely Damn. said something to her pew, because pew, pew. Gretchen has been a friend of mine since season one, and I didn't like that she did that. I thought it was extremely gross and disrespectful, and now she's dating Shannon's ex, and it's thirsty, and it's gross, and just like, yes, it happened, so... Moving on. Yeah, I don't know what I walked into then, but it happened. Yeah. I'm like, you were there. People were there. And it also, it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one conversation. There were other people there when I said that to her. So she wants to go and say it was all lies. I'm like, maybe you were just at the bar a little too long. Anyway, um, your cast was all together at the Emmys this week. Did everyone get along? Give us the tea. For the most part, yes, but... We were also all separated. Some of us were backstage because we were presenting. presenting. We weren't all seated together. They had all of us on the end cap. So in case I think we did win, we could all just get up and kind of come out into the aisle together. Um, yeah, but I think maybe keeping us separated kind of kept the peace for that. Yeah, I think it was a good setup. Everyone, I feel like everyone was enjoyed themselves. Ariana was obviously there, but then she had to leave. Yeah. So that was good. I think it was a great... Yeah. Listen, we're doing our best we can here, guys. Yeah. Um, a lot of questions came in about Nick Files' recent podcasts. I feel like I have been a subject on the last several episodes of his podcast because, I don't know, he has nothing else to talk about. He keeps bringing Charlie on. Katie and Dana just did an episode recently. But one thing I'll say is I actually, and maybe this was naive of me to think, but I actually thought Nick and I were friends. I've known him for years. I've got his phone number. We've done some social media things together. I've guested on his podcast. And I actually thought we were friends. So Charlie referred to you as a payroll husband. Mm -hmm. And then on the next episode that Katie and Dana did, I think he referred to you as the payroll husband. Yep. So I'm like, let's, let's break this down. What does that mean? Does that mean that I you to be my husband, that I treat you like an employee, that I earn more money than my husband because yes, that's true. That's not a secret. And also, I don't see what's wrong with earning more money than my husband. I feel like it seems a bit misogynistic that the woman can't be the breadwinner in the family because support comes in so many forms when it comes to a family. Financial support is just one of them. You support me and this family in so many ways that I wouldn't be able to do as much as I do even with this podcast and have the freedom of changing schedules and all of that if I didn't have you at home as much as you're able to be to work from home to support me in that way. So that really irked me when also his fiance is literally on the payroll. So I'm like, that's kind of rich coming from you. But um, wh what do you want to say about that? Well, I feel like uh, the comment from Charlie was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, I could see where she would get the term payroll husband first off again. I'm the only member of your family that's not on that <laughs> that's payroll. That's actually true. That is actually true because not my dad. My dad's not on the payroll either. Dad. But like, but mom, on that, in that context. But but it's all because you know you're very we're higher within. I not a problem with that. I think it comes from just my un, un my unwavering support for you, mm -hmm. right? So like, what do you want to do? What my schedule is second to yours, and it's not the fact that you you know it's because we're a family. Okay. And I don't think she understands that concept. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, yeah, I have had a career. I was a professional athlete. I went down to San Diego. We had the gyms. We met through the pandemic. We ended up moving up here. And so there was a great opportunity to sell our business. Doesn't mean I don't have other things going on as well, but it just means, and the, the, you're right. I'm confused on this because I'm a male. I cannot support my wife and let her be the right. main breadwinner. That's my first one to it. 
But um, ultimately, for Charlie, I'm like, if she can say whatever she wants, that woman threw a drink at my friends at and a that, club at Delilah. Yeah. She got upset with our friend for having your back, saying, mm -hmm. I don't want you to talk about my friend like that for me, as she was giving her a warning. Mm -hmm. And then she proceeded to have her full glass, throw it. One of those heavy glasses, too. Throw her Collins nice glass at her, miss her, hit her husband. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's like the last kind of interaction we've had with her. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, Charlie, like, I get it. You're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and like, whatever. And then her follow up one was like, yeah, he tried to like evaluate me. And I was like, listen. Yeah. She said that when we, we were at Brad's birthday party. We're, we're at a mutual friend's party. I'm not, I turned the corner and I walked into you guys. It wasn't like I walked up to you guys looking for a conversation. Mm -hmm. I walked into you guys. I'm not an asshole. I'm not going to be ignore you, okay? Like other people in our friend group. That's not what I do. I confront. I confront a show. I'm like, oh, hey guys, how are you guys doing? What are you up to? Like the standard making baseline conversation. conversation to be like, I'm not going to avoid this conversation, but I'm not going to also. And if it's something you're interested, in, like we can talk about. Yeah. Because here's the thing, Corey and I, very much business guys. We used to talk about projects we're working on, what we're we getting up to, and I still will talk to Corey about that. And if that conversation went that way. It had nothing to do with figuring out their status because literally I don't, I have no status to evaluate somebody else's status. Yeah. Like that's not my, so that's Charlie down. Nick vile. <laughs> Look, I want to stay positive, but like, bro, the con, like, what would you like you, if your wife was a lead role in your family and you have a kid, what would you do if you were to stay home? Would you like, like, there's no need to be calling just so that's for me. I don't even go down at half. Plus, I'm just going to point out the guy was he's 40 what? Two. He's 42. He went on a dating show, another dating I think show, three seasons, another Did dating he do two show, or three seasons, and all of those three dating shows left with nobody. And then now at what he was 38 when he met his now 20 year old fiance. Yeah, she was 20. I'm not going to read into that. You do whatever you want, buddy. But just like understand when you work doing with a family. Roles change sometimes. And I struggled with that this whole season. I went from being this leading role in my family to being a, a supporting role. And I'm okay, but to be honest, I'm okay with the supporting role because it gives me the freedom to spend a lot of time with our kid and then also allow us to, allow me to do other ventures too. Mm -hmm. And hopefully in 2024, these ventures start paying off, okay? And so thanks for talking about me, guys. Yeah. Uh, and if it's anything, if you guys want to take from that is just be a better partner to your wife. If you think you're not a payroll, get on that payroll, buddy. <laughs> also, I feel like Charlie's a little extra bitter because when we all got together for the girls night and rallied for Ariana last season in that very last episode, right when I sat down, I was like, we're putting our shit aside. Same as Katie and I did. It was only about Ariana in that moment. And Charlie's like, we're friends again, right? Like, follow me back. And I was like, look, I'll unblock you. For the sake of if we're starting a group chat and an Ariana support thing, whatever. I said, but what you did to my friend that night when you threw that drink, she was, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. No, 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 Like, forget it, forget it. And I was like, no, no, no. Because we are not going to move forward in a friendship until you apologize for that. And the fact that you can't take any accountability, we are not going to be friends. And I even had my sister drop her off at home that night. I was cordial. I unblocked her. But I feel like because well, I didn't just. Her, you dropped her off. We even dropped her off. We were so nice. This girl can kick rocks. Moving on. But for that, I'm Moving like, on. you know what? Bye. Moving on. It's called being a supporting partner. <sighs> yep. Um, a lot of people obviously want to know if I listened to Raquel's podcast that came out this week. If I was with her at the Grove because we posted there at the same time. I was not with her. Oh my whatsoever. God. What a, we what a... happened to be at the same place, at the same time, Lala and I are walking out of dinner with the kids, the moms, and she's like, keep walking. And I was like, wait, what? Like, what's going on? And then she's like, just let's keep walking. And I turn around and I see Raquel standing there in the gold sparkly dress with all of her friends. And I was like, yeah, not, no, we're going to keep walking. Wait, and so people, so, people, people took your social media and, and then put it together. And we was like, posted oh, at yeah. the Grove at the same time, <laughs> the same night. What a blood But night. yeah, we were absolutely not together. I have not listened to her podcast. What was the best thing to happen in 2023, honey? Let's, let's wrap it up here. And if you have any New Year's resolutions, business goals. Yeah. Uh, best thing in 2023. Um, 
honestly, was meeting your buddy Jeff, a good friend of yours, mm -hmm. Jeff Bowler, um, and having that opportunity to get into the creative space of developing and working on production. Um, again, have no idea what my future holds, but it started off as a dairy farmer, turned athlete, turned business owner, turned um, entertainment space. So there, I have really no compass of what the world holds, but thanks to Jeff, he has given me a lot of good advice and he's helped me put myself in good positions going into this new year. So that was a highlight. I think that's a highlight I could take um, from 2023 because we had a pretty rough year that year. Yeah, it was definitely one of the most <laughs> challenging years of my life in more ways than one. But going into this year, I'm just looking forward to focusing on our family, our business, you know, even though you're not on the payroll, but just our business together, the things we get to do together, the vlogs we get to create, the activities and experiences that we get to do with our daughter and I, I feel very confident for the first time in a long time in myself, yeah. in our relationship, in business that I'm doing, in steps that we're taking, and I know the right direction. And I think for me, one of the best things, if not the best thing that happened to me in 2023 was meeting Kevin and Lando and starting music with them because that has been an outlet for me that I didn't know I needed so much. And today when I woke up, I had an epiphany after I heard more things that have been said about me. And I'm like, you know what? I now know the entire theme of my EP. I have such a clear vision of what we're going to do with the next couple songs we're writing. And I'm so excited for that to come out. I was saying mid-February, I'm going to push it because I don't want to rush it. I want to put more work into it. But we did decide that we are going to be releasing Boy Crazy, my next single, this month. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. And then we're going to waterfall the EP. So every month we're going to put out another song. And then at the end of the season of Vanderpump Rules, around then, we'll put out the whole EP so you can get them all in one place. But until then, it's going to be just a waterfall of it. So, yeah, excited, very excited for 2024. And getting into more shenanigans. Thank you guys so much for watching, for listening, for sending in your questions, for your support. It means the world. We don't get to do the job that we love doing if it wasn't for all of you. So thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back next week. Bye. Catch you later.